Uh, absolutely epic. I know I just asked you first, how are you enjoying the fruits of your efforts? How are you enjoying this epic vacation? It's amazing. It's actually so good. And I think more people should join us next year because it's we've been treated like royalty, total royalty. And I might give a little view of the accommodations. You can you can see the resort. That's only really only a portion of it. And then we're actually at, at my room, which has a phenomenal wraparound balcony. But Christina, being uh, an epic promoter, has gotten certainly one of the uh, top accommodations yes, in, in the entire world. So, you know, we're gonna we're gonna have a wonderful conversation on success with simple who, what, when, where, why, and how type questions. So this can be a challenging question: Who is Christina Springer? Who are you? Who am I? Yes. I'm just a simple person that was discovered in Organa. Ah, well, I like that. Okay, so what did you see uh, in that discovery, and, and who discovered you? What did they see? Well, basically, um, can I tell the story? How? Of, of course. Okay. I had traveled overseas. I'd lost my father, and on my way back, we stopped in Dubai. So. All my flight plans have changed, and sitting there on that plane, I met the most amazing man that we exchanged business cards, and arriving back in South Africa, the very next morning, I got this WhatsApp call, please contact Rose Khan, of which I did. Rose Khan is known to Dr. Bob, because he helped her through her illness, and when she mentioned it was coffee, I said, Immediately I said I'm in because I'd heard about it in 2014 and thought this is the way forward for me because I have tried so many other networks and been very, very disappointed. So that is where the excitement started immediately and that was in April and had a very long wait before Ghana was going to arrive in South Africa. So that's, that's epic. So you and Rose Khan and Zaf Khan mm -hmm paved the way for Organo to get here. So how, tell me about that journey. When did you sign up? What country did you sign up? And tell me about the challenges okay. with that. I signed up on the 24th of um, April. So it was, I brought back from overseas on the 18th. Of what year? 19, what? 2018. Okay. Yeah, so it was a year, a few months before Organo was going to open in South Africa. So I joined on April, 24th of April, and there was no product in South Africa. I educating myself along the way of what this coffee can do, um, passing on the information. I was constantly sending WhatsApps to everybody, um, creating awareness that this coffee is going to come to South Africa. It took um, a lot of people who were still skeptical. When are we going to try the coffee? Eventually, I signed up through Turkey. So eventually, I decided let me buy a pack and get it to South Africa. But Rose Khan came up. We organized our first coffee jazz mixer, I would say, 10th of July. We have got a few prominent people together that I felt would love to run with this opportunity because they were disappointed in many other things they were doing. And there we were. We were all there trying the coffee and they were immediately with some of the people that were there. And then the Tanzanians and the Italians were coming to South Africa. So I organized a big event where I thought now's the time for me to, my box had arrived from um, Turkey, so I had some coffee. No point having an event with no coffee. So that's how I basically started. Um, we were hosted on the 29th of uh, July, our first meeting with about 40 people in the room. And um, Salvatore, the, the other Ruby, my Italian friend, he was there, he helped me along, and Mary Obundu, and we got it going. And the excitement was there. And that's when I invited my um, friend that I met on the plane that I hadn't invited him before. So I said, would you like to have coffee with me? Come to the clubhouse. 
and sure enough, he was there. Um, and that's Patrick, yes? Patrick. Okay. He's prominent in my team right now. So when I say you can go out there, you don't need to know somebody, um, just approach. You never know what you're going to have. Uh, he's a businessman. I would never have thought that he would join my business, and he did. And that's how I got started. And he's also top ten yeah. in, in the world. So I, I want to take a few steps back. So first and foremost, the way that Rose Khan was introduced to Organa was through Zath Khan. Yeah. And the way Zath Khan was introduced to the business was through Pete Cohen. And what had happened there was Zath was looking for opportunity. Pete is a phenomenal promoter and has a lot, has a voice all over the world. He created a video. Zaf loved it, reached out to Pete, and they had a coffee conversation. Zaf got into Organo. Rose had a health challenge. She did a consult with me, completely beat this significant health challenge. And we won't say any more than that. We won't make any type of health claims. So let's just say it was very serious and, and, and for some people life-threatening and, and she came out of the backside of that really wonderful and Rose reached out to you but Rose's journey to get and Zaps to get Organo in South Africa was, was about four years long. Yes. Yeah, it took them about four years. They, they saw what the product could do and that was from a personal experience and they said South Africa needs this and how powerful of them to connect with you. How did you, how did you know Rose before? No, I didn't know Rose. I, Fascinating. I actually got the message from a good friend uh -huh. that we were in other networks uh, 11 years back, which I hadn't heard from him. I hadn't managed to be involved in any of the others that I joined. And out of the blue, I said, if Shahina sent me this message, so waking up, jet lagged, I made that call to uh, Rose Khan in Durban. And we had a chat, she was super excited. Uh, we continued talking, talking, and I said to her, listen, if I get it, team, which um, I said, I've got something on my computer. I'm sure I joined Organa 2014, but it was not in South Africa, so I couldn't do anything with it, and it just died. But now knowing from her that it was going to happen in South Africa, I was maybe very excited because what I heard about the coffee was amazing. What I read in the 2014 was so good and I wanted to get going, but it wasn't in our country. So that's how I think the excitement of Rose, the way she was talking the whole time and the way we built a rapport together and she had more information than I did. She passed it on to me. I then passed it on to everybody that I knew, and without realizing what was happening, I started my little coffee empire. So you are a Ruby, and you went Ruby the first month that Organo was in South Africa. You're a top 10 recruiter in the entire world. Yeah. <laughs> but yet, in your previous networking experiences, you really didn't have much success. I did in some, and you know, like they're there, but they're not there to stay for long. So what happens then? The disappointments of all these other networks always made me hesitant because they looked at me because I take things to heart and, you know, I look after whoever I bring in and I work with them. So if anything goes wrong, they look at me and they say, oh, Christina. Meanwhile, it's not me, it's a company. So with Organa, I just felt... Nothing can go wrong with this company. It's coffee. So if I ask them to invest in the coffee opportunity, they're either going to buy as a customer and enjoy it and maybe get better. But um, if they had joined my business side, I wouldn't feel guilty because they would have got product. So it's not going to affect my relationship with them. So that is why I was happy about the coffee. So I'll, I'll share in conversations that I've had with leaders, Pierre and Mauritius, they said, as a general rule, the South African population is very hesitant for network marketing because the vast majority of companies that have come in have come in and they've been out of business within just a few years. That's 100%. And knowing that South Africa's got a warehouse, that makes it a lot different. All you have to do is invite them to your warehouse, show them where the stock is, and then they're happy. Yeah, there, there's the proof. So, And I would encourage everybody, one, you can go to corporate headquarters 
headquarters in Vancouver. Now that's that's a heck of a trip. Yeah. You can go to China and you can see the the growing partners, the supply partners. You can go to Joburg and we have an epic world class warehouse facility stacked floor to ceiling with I don't know how many thousands and thousands of square feet with professional staff. But there was a few skeptical people and I went into the warehouse and I said, okay, tell me, tell me, you know, your your concerns or your questions. And they said, Well, what's the future of organo? And I just looked and I said, Well, where was this warehouse last year? Yeah. They said it didn't exist. I said, look around you. You've got millions of dollars of inventory which will move to the people of Africa within the next 90 days. This company is flourishing. That's 100%. Now they're making a huge investment in South Africa. Why, why do you think that is? Why do you think organo? And that might be a, a tough question for you to answer. I have my own opinion. Why are they making such a huge investment in Africa? Oh, the, the population, first of all. And we need it for health purposes as well. I mean, coffee is one of the largest consumed commodities. And all around South Africa, if you look, there's coffee shops opening. That's it. Clothing shops are closing. Coffee shops are opening. That's what I can see. Mm -hmm. The luxuries are going. And it's basically what you can see in shopping centers. People are not surviving. We've gone from a society of brick and mortar to a society mm -hmm. of click and order. So storefronts are challenged. But we've seen people in countries that were had a, a very poor population but yet it gives them a lift up. It gives them from a bridge from, well, let's just even call what it is, it's pure poverty, to taking the next step to the next step to the next step to creating their dream life. Well, for me, um, I could see that I'm going to empower so many people out there because I've always been in sales. And I could see I could take a normal man off the street and make a change to his life by him selling one or two boxes a day. I mean, to go home with 400 rand in your pocket per day is going to make a big difference to anybody in South Africa. So that's right around 30 US dollars for the conversion, 400 rand. Uh, but one to two boxes a day. Some can sell one, some can sell two, some can sell 10. So that is, to them. well, couldn't we all, if we could sell one, we could sell two. If we could sell two, we could sell three. If we could sell three, we could sell ten. If we could sell ten, we could sell teach someone else to sell one. Well, this is what I'm trying to get out there. I'm saying to them, if I gave you a box at 400 Rand and I said to you, can you go out and sell it and keep 200 Rand for yourself, can you do it? They said, no, we can do more. So basically, if you talk to the people and you give them the opportunity and you say to them, here's, here's how I can change your life, um, instead of going and begging on the streets, go out and sell a few sachets and you can make a difference to a lot of people's lives. So they are selling it by the sachet yeah. and they're making a box to two box to ten boxes a day sale. Yeah. I sold, uh, one lady bought on Saturday three boxes. On Sunday night she sends me a message, please order me some more. Mm -hmm. So that's just proof something. Yeah. So one of my favorite definitions of success or formulas for success is success equals hunger times skill. So let's let's take those two components. How hungry are the people of South Africa? Very, very. Now let's go to the second part. What does their skill level usually start out at? Uh, what would? We, is their skill level high or low initially? Low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very so. Low. High hunger, low skill, you still have a formula for success. Yeah, but now what happens after they start working the business for a day or a week or a month? Does their skill level improve? 100%. Is it that beautiful? Changes. Absolutely. So there's a formula for success for the entire world. You know, and I've been in countries where they say, well, our people are too rich. They don't want this. But you have people that don't need the money that are in the business. Some people say, well, my people are too poor or, or too unskilled. This is, this is a bridging point, isn't it? To me, it's for everybody. I mean, I've got people in my team that don't need it, don't need the money, but they're there. Why? They're, a lot of them have, uh, belong to churches, they're pastors. So they are there to help people. So they've done it mainly to help who they can out there in South Africa. And there are so, so many people to help. So, we, you know, we have a list of 
how many countries are formally open uh, and, and full-scale operations, and yet there's plans to open four more countries by the end of 2019 on the continent mm -hmm. of Africa. So I think everyone must move this side. <laughs> well, you know what? There, there are plenty of leaders that are here in Mauritius that have made investments into Africa because of that hunger factor. Yeah, because it's a new country opening and awareness. I mean, we're sitting here in our room right now, and Johnny, one of my partners, he gets a message, I oh, know, but we've got family in Mauritius. So immediately now, we're going to do something in Mauritius. You're going to meet up with the people. So yeah. Wherever you go in Africa, you're going to meet people that need it. You know, so, so we've got a, you know, one, a, a, a world-class product. We've got world-class leadership. We've got leaders that have a huge heart, and now they're bringing in different products. So tell me about the beauty line in South Africa. What do you think the future is for, for beauty in South Africa? To me, I think it's going to be awesome. Why? Personally, we have to break into that market as well, because that's one thing that most women are looking forward to. Not only women. I've had a, ma a man Google, and he says, oh, you've got that amazing view line coming. So to me, I think everyone's going to go out and want to buy a view. And how about travel benefits? Oh, travel, that's my, one of my lines, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I was selling timeshare before that. So for me, I can see it being amazing because with timeshare, you get tied down to paying that huge levy for a resort. Every year, you get disappointed because you cannot get what you want. Sorry, it's taken up. And that's what I was doing before. So I always felt guilty. And just before Organa opened, that's what I was doing. And I would sit in front of my clients and say to them, how would you like to join the coffee business rather than buying a timeshare? So that wasn't good. Um, so I can see the travel business being exceptionally good for South Africans. And you could actually get in business people to join Organo purely by drinking the coffee and having the benefit of all the travel as well at the same time. No. Well, that, that's what our leadership is, is talking about when, when they create a new line of product, right? So first we started with healthy coffee and tea. Then we've got healthy shakes. And, and we may want to address that in a moment. But healthy shakes do not take away from healthy coffee and tea. People aren't going to no. stop. They're not going to switch their coffee for shakes or vice versa. Their skincare. Well, they're, they're, they're not going to, you know, for the most part, shake, take coffee dollars or away from skincare or vice versa. And travel. Four unique verticals. It's going to be a... Big change for South Africa. So now the, the shakes, you, you've had a, a, seen some people that have had some really wonderful success with the shakes. I ran the program for the launch of OGX and we did an eight week cycle with them. So there were results, but it, we did it at, towards the end, January to February, end right. of March. So we had like eight weeks there. There was huge results, but I know now that coming into spring, we're going to have to jump in there again and get them all back onto the OG shakes because it does work. And we had some tremendous results at our last launch. So I, I now by the way, we're in the Southern Hemisphere, mm -hmm. so we're talking about that was going to be the spring leading to summer. Mm -hmm. And now we just happen to be in winter. What a, what a winter we have here. Right? This, is, this is winter. Yes, how beautiful. So one of the things that we want to uh, maybe build a bridge from is, is that healthy shakes are not seasonal. Weight loss is not seasonal. A like healthy body with healthy input is really for every day of every, every season day. for every person. Well, that's what I found, that I have to educate them. They mustn't wait for summer to start again. So I, I met a man who had some of the most phenomenal testimonials from Kenya. And he said, Bob, there are three problems generally in the African continent. And, and the first was the, just the, the lack of availability of good information. Yeah, and also the health system. So how, how do you go about sharing that good information? Is it, is it more or less person to person? Can they leverage technology? How's your primary means uh, of the, sharing? I'll be honest, um, it's very hard with uh, technology for them. So to get it out there, we have to 
give them their samples and follow up with them the whole time because they won't open WhatsApp as much as what we would and they won't sit on Facebook or any of that sort. That's, that's what I've noticed. Um, but I do follow up with everybody that I sample. I try and follow up and get a testimony from them, which I then share. Okay, so while we're on that, do you have a personal favorite? It could be from your team, someone you sampled, or maybe something that you heard about, maybe about a testimonial, I don't know if we're going to name health conditions, because we, we, we got people that fuss about <laughs> making a claim, but anybody that had a real crisis or, or issue that uh, resolved with organic products that jumps out at you? Well, there, there's so much that I don't like to repeat on names or specific illnesses or whatever. Very smart. Very smart. I have to be very careful. Yep. But then when you do see the results and the paperwork when they come back from the doctors and I'm it's just too incredible. You don't want to believe it, but it's there. It's happened. I mean, if you personally know the person and you've witnessed it, that's the most important thing for me is we are there, we know it's happening, and we can refer back to somebody that we personally know, and that is what's happening in South Africa. The three components with the African continent that I heard from a leader, another Ruby from Kenya, a great man. In fact, I'll name his name, Simon. Simon's one of my heroes now. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal man. He said, we've got ignorance, we've got poverty, and we've got health challenges. And he believes that Organo is a powerful solution to all three. So now let, let's just go with, with the poverty. So you have a team member who you said doesn't need the money. And so he literally essentially gives the coffee on consignment for people to go sell it. Yeah, so that was my gentleman on my surprise little. What can I call him? Uh, we could call him an angel. Uh, and, yeah, yeah it, yes. funny enough, you said that. Yeah, everyone says, um, Christina, you were touched by an angel. Yes, and that was Patrick. So Patrick was there on the plane with me. Uh, so I, he actually said I was the angel in his life. So, I don't know now because I touched him on his shoulder. You're both. Yeah, and I woke him up for his uh, lunch. You know, they were serving lunch, and he says, an angel touched me on my shoulder. Okay. Well, he joined my business, and he doesn't need the money. He is a businessman, a very successful businessman. Uh, he bought a gold pack. But what he does, he takes whatever coffee he's got. He's got six or seven people out there, and they're selling for him. He's opened a separate bank account for Organo, and he doesn't touch his own money now. So he uses that bank account to buy more stock. And I even asked him this morning, I said, Patrick, what's going on? So he says to me, I don't need that money. But it's there. It's there for me to buy more stock, and he helps so many people. He says, if I can employ 40 people out there selling for me, that is what he's going to do. Well, no. So he's changing their lives. He doesn't need the money, but he's more to help people. He's also top ten in the world. Yes. And he's got beautiful accommodations like this. So uh, in many, many ways, this has been so eye-opening for me because, you you know, now Patrick would be the guy that said, well, he wouldn't be interested because he doesn't need it. Yeah, no. And the people that he's helping, they say, well, they wouldn't be interested. They don't have any money. They don't have any skills. But here we have a man who doesn't need it. Working with people that think couldn't succeed, top ten in the world, enjoying paradise and building on it every single day. And then others that I've got in my team are networkers. So they can see a bigger vision with Organa than what they have seen with other networks that they've done. Yeah, and I don't, you know, I, we, we can mention names if, if we want, but you, Johnny. yeah, you've got a powerful, powerful, powerful individual, powerful networker who was top in Africa with a massive team of over 100,000 many, many years ago. 180 or 80,000. And, and that was a company that just went away, right? Yeah. And now he sees the stability of this. He knows the, the value of the product, the leadership. And uh, let's have a bold prediction on that. What's the future of those two individuals? Oh, they'll be on the next next holiday as well with me. Well, that, they're they're, they're <laughs> diamonds and above, I'm certain of that. If I get them to diamond, I'm going to go. 
Hey, and now, by the way, you have one on your right, one on your left, right? They both, yeah, but the one, and I've got another lady that's here with me as well, Tandi. Yes. She's amazing, incredible, and I can see a great future for her as well. So this OG Getaway has under opened everybody's eyes, and I think everyone must work towards it because where can you get a five-star holiday like this, fully paid for? And I mean, here I am sitting with Dr. Bob, and I love it. I didn't ever think I'd be able to touch this man. Well, I am in awe. Yeah, <laughs> what what I, you I, have just, done is, that's why you're on this call. You're, you're a world leader, you're a world-class individual, you share from the heart, uh, and you've shown people what what can happen. It's not it's not where you are; mm -hmm. it's who you are. Yeah, are we out there? We're gonna do it. Yes, we are. Every single amazing day. So, what are you most excited about in the future? Oh, I know I'm not gonna stop. <laughs> I'm just gonna carry on building and building and. Moving throughout to Africa if I can. Well, Organo it certainly you, yeah. is having that plan, right? They see the value in this content in, in the countries, in the people, but it goes nowhere without leadership. And you are at the pinnacle, certainly, you know, in South Africa. And we, we have people in, in other countries in Africa that have become diamonds. So they've paved the way. They know it can be done. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of the best way to, to wrap this up. What type of advice do you have for people? Let's say people's organizations are stalled or, or maybe even going backwards. What, what's the tip to help them move forward? Okay, the tip. All right. I've also analyzed my business all the time, and I do see the loopholes. I, you've got to actually know your back office a little bit and help your people. I don't want to say that some people don't ever open their back office. So how are you going to know that you've got somebody there that's uh, buying and buying and they're close to being star achiever, but no one actually make, gives them a little call to say you, you two boxes a way of achieving star achiever. So that is what I do. I follow my back office a lot. Um, I give my... I I do work with my team, I follow up with them. If they're having issues, I say put them in front of me, let's do it together. Um, help them with their CJMs. Um, I think everyone, when, once they've joined, they forget that we should go back to our old, the way we started. And that's what I can see, we haven't been doing a bit, and I'm gonna go back into that. I wanna go back to my old system where there was hardly any coffee there. And saying to everybody, don't forget those TJMs, your meetings, especially when they just join. It's all fresh, it's new. Get them success as soon as possible because that's when they're going to stay in the business. If you just abandon them from day one, you've lost them. And I try and revive people that have been, that signed up, say, for free. I'm working towards getting them uh, to at least buy one or two boxes. Once they've tried the product, they're obviously going to want to buy more and maybe join the business as well. Africa had a phenomenal promotion. And, you know, we sometimes we say when people pay, they pay attention, and that tends to be true. But what if you have nothing to start with? And, and, and so yeah. Organo has been very, very generous in getting these people in. If, if I were to talk about our team and what I thought was our, our biggest uh, boost every single time our events. So you've got Unite... Uh, coming up yeah. and so tell me about the excitement around that and what's your expectation coming out of Unite? Well, I think we're going to sell plenty of gold packs. We've got the most amazing, I mean we've got the launch of the sports and the best man that can do it is Dr. Bob. So that's why he's in Africa and I think he's going to make our Unite very, very successful for us. Um, we've got our awards, uh, we should be receiving our eagles, our rubies. And mm -hmm. uh, there isn't an emerald yet, but you never know. Towards the end of this year, well, I predict there will be. So, and for clarity, the reason Dr. Bob is here is because of leaders like you, like Johnny, like Patrick, like Rose, like Sal, uh, 
and, and, and uh, Tandy as well, right? Yeah, I mean, she's, she's definitely yeah. growing and, and thriving and, and a beautiful presence and on this trip as well, but no leaders, no country. And, and so one final tip, how, how can someone move into that leadership role that, that you have moved into so beautifully? Well, I actually, they've got to actually create, they've got to get their people up in the ranks and they must help them to get further than that. Because I'm looking at some of them that hit VIP, platinum, but they don't ever go further. So we've got to assist those because those are the future. And that is what I can see is happening in South Africa. Um, a lot of people have been abandoned. So even if they're not in my team, I will go out there and help them. Say, I've got an event coming up. Would you like to slot in? And they do. And this is how we can revive a lot of them. I mean, we have another Sapphire that we have in our team. I actually phone personally and say to him, listen, I know you've got a good person here. Please bring them along. And that is how I'm going to help them as well because they need guidance. They call me their mother. So maybe because I am older than most of them, I'm like a mother to the South African team. Well, even the, even those that really aren't even biologic mothers yet and of a very young age, and we have plenty of them, they have their own organo offspring. Yeah. And, and so I am beyond proud of, of what you've done, of what South Africa has done, of what all of Africa has done, how Organo has said, we're going to make an investment in this continent, in this people, in the health, in the education, and in the wealth. And we know, we, we know, right? We talked about three levels of things. You, you can have hope. That's one thing. You can have faith. That's a little deeper, but you can have a knowing. And we have a knowing that Organo is here to stay. They're here to change lives. They're here to make the world better. Any final words as, as we end this powerful meeting? And well, all I can say is that we've got uh, great leadership as well with uh, who's running our offices. Um, Bobby and Helen and the crew there, they've been amazing. And I feel that their heart's all there for us and they are pushing us forward and they're working with us. And any problem we have, we can go straight to them. So I think our leadership is all there. We've got everything going for us. We've got stock for Africa, as you can say. I mean, our warehouse is chock-a-block. So when we do get back home, I think there's going to be um, a few more platinums and sapphires popping up after Unite. I can see it. Huge. Yeah. All right. Well, OG world, OG family. Yes. One and team. The one team, one dream. That's you. You model it so beautifully, mm -hmm. and that's the system that works. So <laughs> uh, it's going to be evening for you. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say good night and God bless, even though it's daytime. And it's windy, and it's uh, the hair's not rough. <laughs> Never more beautiful. Congratulations <laughs> on making our world so much better. Thank you so much, Thank you. Thank you.